This is Lena Mark Suzak, and we are Christians, Christians in, a caravan, in a caravan drinking coffee. Drinking coffee. Um, today's subject is on the religious spirit. Uh, quite a history of learning about legalism. I wrote a book called First Wash the Inside. It's on Amazon. And the second book called Break a Rule. But I, the more I'm learning about this religious spirit and how it can drive you to insanity, uh, mental illness, other th many things. Well, it also makes you spiritually retarded. Spiritually retarded. You're not sensitive to the spirit because you're so focused on what you're doing in the flesh. When you agree with a, a religious spirit and it's it's in you you will think things like oh the Amish they have it going on their their lifestyle is better it's more they're, they're, pure they're more holy um, it's a beautiful thing to live without technology no cars you know you like to go back to um, living like uh, Little House on the Prairie you think that's better than what we have, which is kind of sick with all the all the, the improvements that we have. People feeling that religious spirit would make you feel like that's evil, technology's evil, um, and anybody can have a religious spirit. It doesn't even have to be somebody that's religious. It could be an atheist. The the love of rules and like get into pro deprivation. Um, living off the land, no cars. I'm not saying doing that is wrong. I'm saying the reason people like it is evil. It's anti-Christ. Because that is all in pride. That's all for the, the, the reason people like doing that is pride. Which is the opposite of what it looks like. It looks like they're humble people. We want to be more humble, so therefore, we want to live without electricity. We want to have plain clothing, only wearing black, no buttons, zippers. They decided what's flashy. You know, oh, the plainer the better. And now this is just building up. It's just the opposite of what they want. It's, and then they're they're you know nice people but they um, they have their focus is all on plainer is, is more holy because all this other stuff you know having technology they think that builds up pride so remove all this stuff and live off the land and you think you're not gonna have pride anymore that's not how you get delivered of it right So, it drives you to a mental illness. We did help somebody through a mental illness that she's been he, uh, remarkably delivered of. And her, um, where I believe she got it, started where it starts. It's some, I think she was involved with Jehovah's Witness. And what do you know about Jehovah's Witness? Well, it's very performance based. You got to do all these things to be right with God. It's backwards. It's First, you're right with God, and then you do things because of it. If you're doing things to earn or gain God's favor or blessing, your motive is already wrong. God does everything by grace. And grace is like. A dirty word to somebody with a religious spirit. I know we were there. I had we had a small home group, a home church, and trying to you know live life. I mean, granted, these people, everybody, you know, they're trying to be right with God, be good people, uh, get away from sin. But it's in the flesh, not by the spirit. They don't understand what grace is and why it's not an excuse for sin, it's empowerment. So the grace teaching seems to be the enemy of the person with the legalistic 
religious spirit and the person that's got a religious spirit will be driven driven to do the self -def deprivation uh, get rid of everything that's safe you know basically your glasses your cell phone your you know your car your um, you know just more and more um, trying to be good in the flesh don't uh, it's just lie after lie but it's um the grace of God is the power of it's like Paul said I'm not ashamed of the gospel it is the power uh, unto salvation and we're not ashamed of the grace of God. That's my one of my favorite verses because we get made to feel like grace is bad by a religious person, and it's uh it's very backwards. So if you feel living off the land is um, just makes you feel better about yourself as far as like with God you and God that's a religious spirit trying to convince you of that and it's, it leads to death it'll deprive you of everything that is safe it'll put you in harm's way it'll keep convincing you that oh and judgment judge, judging others everybody else's um unholy and this is better and anyway yeah, if you yeah. choose to deprive yourself of something because you think that makes you more acceptable unto god then you are right away going to place judgment on everyone else who has not deprived themselves of that item because you're well, more enlightened right and you're more holy because of what you've deprived yourself of that is not how the kingdom of heaven works God accepts you only for one reason, Jesus. Everything that Jesus did for you, everything that Jesus imputed onto you, righteousness, holiness, that is the only thing that's acceptable to God for the purposes of gaining his approval, acceptance, entrance into heaven. Now, if you want to deprive yourself something of something because it's controlling you or, or has mastered itself over you, that's a good reason to deprive yourself. Like if you've got a problem with eating chocolate out of control, you might be a person that needs to deprive yourself of chocolate in order to get control over it. But it's that like has nothing that has nothing to do with making you holy or acceptable unto God. Fasting from anything is uh, is a a good tool. It doesn't fasting doesn't make you more holy, but it gives you control back. Right over yourself you're supposed right. to have control over your body keep your body in subjection it's all scriptural right you deprive yourself of electricity because you think that that's more pure and that's more holy you've you're already in error because you are completely misunderstanding what the gospel is the gospel is the incredible unbelievable good news that god accepts you because of jesus not because of what you do or don't do. And when you, you know you've heard the gospel, when your heart tr is triggered to say, so what then? Should we just go ahead and live in sin? If you've heard the gospel to the level that Paul preached it, that is a logical conclusion. Are you saying I can just sin and it doesn't matter? Well, of course we're not advocating sin. Well, that's because sin is harmful. The only reason living in sin isn't uh, acceptable is because why would you run around with scissors, jump on the bed, play with matches? Those are harmful things. Can you do that? Is it going to be still okay? Yeah. But like cheating on your wife, all the, you know, getting drunk, having uh, orgies. I mean, oh, you're going to say I could just go, you know, I might as well just, uh, I mean, keep calling myself under grace and go do this and go do that. Well, there's all harmful behavior. Right, right, and if you're thinking that way, chances are you're not even born again. Well, it's just to make a point. I feel like people just want to make that point. But that's why when I make the point, I like to point out, if you did that, 
it's not just because it's not just about that wouldn't please God. It's just sin is all harmful behavior. It's not going to lead to anything but death. Therefore, God didn't name a bunch of things and to call them sin just to deprive you of pleasure. Sin, sinful behavior seems exciting for a minute. Like when a kid starts playing with matches. But eventually, it's going to get you. That's all it is. If we really had an understanding of sin, we wouldn't be asking those questions. So, understanding sin and understanding grace are a healthy perspective on the Christian um, Christian living and your relationship with God. So, that's just the first... Um, teaching I want to do on the religious spirit. It's like having a conversation with somebody that's got a religious spirit and trying to actually come down to, so you think living like that would be better. That's what they think. And I have talked to many people, even in my own family, they think that that would be better. Oh, I'd love to live like that. I couldn't do it, but I have so much respect. Well, when I watch when I watch people living like that, it disgusts me because the reason they're living like that is so anti-Christ. It's anti-grace. It's trying in the flesh to be good. It's, it, you have to understand, you, if you don't understand that, you don't understand grace. That's what I want to say today. And try to think about the gospel of grace that we're living under in Jesus name so we we conclude do you have anything else you want to say no. we are Christians in a caravan drink your coffee thank you